Nations have attempted to gain a military technical edge throughout history. Strong countries have survived by being the pioneers in the development of novel weaponry, from fire and gunpowder to nuclear weapons, and ammunition delivery methods, from catapults and cannons to B-52s and rockets. Conflict, countries, and uprisings will always exist as long as people struggle for what they perceive to be fair and just. Despots who tragically send their forces into battle out of a desire for supremacy and conquest or out of paranoia will always exist. Hello guys and welcome to Military Knowledge. Today we have an exciting video ahead of us where we will be discussing the AI warfare in the Ukraine-Russia war. So let's dive right on in. The employment of machine-based weaponry has generally replaced the use of human warriors, despite the fact that this may not be obvious given what we have observed in early Russian military tactics. Since the early days of the battle for Kiev, however, new UAVs or unmanned aerial vehicles and land-based AMR or autonomous mobile robots military equipment are being tested in real time over Ukraine's towns and airspace. Although it may not be immediately apparent given what we have seen in the early Russian military tactics, the use of machine-based weapons has steadily superseded the usage of human troops. However, modern UAV and land-based AMR military apparatus have been tested in real time over Ukraine's towns and airspace from the early stages of the war for Kyiv. We are in the first open source intelligence war, claimed OODA Loop CTO Bob Gawley in March 2022, at the start of Russia's invasion in Ukraine. Two recent pieces do an excellent job of building on Bob's initial premise, capturing the additional parallels and frames that have been used to characterize this ongoing battle in Europe, a year and a half into the fight. Since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, there has been a lot of discussion on whether this is a regular war or a revolutionary fight. The war was referred to as the first TikTok war in March 2022 piece published in The New Yorker. Mikhailo Fedorov, the minister of Ukraine's digital transformation, has referred to it as a technology war. The technology being employed, according to Alex Karp, CEO of data analytics firm Palantir, is altering the competitive edge a tiny country has over a more powerful foe. A front page story on the first full scale drone war between Russia and Ukraine appeared in the Washington Post in December. Furthermore, for years we have heard predictions that the next big war would be a kind of cyber Armageddon. To what extent is the Ukraine conflict also characterized by AI? The third revolution in warfare, following gunpowder and nuclear weapons, according to Kai Fu Li, CEO of Sinovation Ventures, is the use of AI weaponry. Is the revolution actually happening right now? Does the conflict in Ukraine portend a shift in the nature of war? Still not. We think Ukraine is a testing ground for the next generation of combat, while it hasn't yet completely altered the nature of the conflict. It's a persistent, unheard of effort to optimize, adapt, and upgrade AI-enabled or AI-enhanced systems for rapid deployment, rather than a marginal laboratory. Future AI warfare is being made professional by this word. The future is one that's anticipated. Visions of AI-powered combat have proliferated in recent years and have been given in a variety of conceptual names. General John Allen, a retired Marine Corps general, and Amir Hussein, the creator of Spark Cognition, have dubbed it Piper War, a type of AI-controlled conflict in which there is little to no human decision-making. This is what Robert Work, a former Deputy Secretary of Defense, and others refer to as an algorithmic warfare when autonomous systems and weapons independently begin choosing their course of action depending on the circumstances in which they find themselves. Hello guys, we're halfway through. Do us a quick favor by subscribing to Military Knowledge to know more about these topics. Thank you. Now, let's move back onto the video. The phrase Mosaic Warfare, which has a more tactical connotation and refers to the combination of conventional platforms with uncrewed technologies to gain an edge on the battlefield, was developed by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. The term Software Defined Warfare was recently coined by retired Air Force Lieutenant Jack Shanahan and CIA Chief Technology Officer Nand Mulchandani as part of a vision in which software will be the essential component of the defense architecture required for next generation warfighting systems. Lieutenant General Shanahan served as the first director of the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center. The idea of a genuinely networked battlefield in which data travels at the speed of light to connect to sensors to shooters as well as the entirety of deployed troops and other parties is what unites all of these proposals. 
It's a future scenario that's imagined in part due to the rapid advancement of technology, but also due to the worries about geopolitical competition and what near-peer rivals may have been able to implement in the near future. The Russia-Ukraine war falls short of these future scenarios, yet it clearly brings these futurist visions of warfare closer to reality. The conflict is an unprecedented testing ground for AI. Its usage has been seen in various places. What makes this conflict unique is the unprecedented willingness of foreign geospatial intelligence companies to assist Ukraine by using AI-enhanced systems to convert satellite imagery into intelligence, surveillance, and the reconnaissance advantages. US companies play a leading role in this. The Russia-Ukraine war can also be considered the first conflict where AI-enhanced facial recognition software has been used on a substantial scale. In March of 2022, Ukraine's defense ministry started using facial recognition software produced by the US company Clearview AI. This allows Ukraine to identify dead soldiers and to uncover Russian assailants and combat misinformation. Before Russian troops crossed the border into Ukraine, Russia cut off Ukraine's use of Viasat communication satellites. The intention was to cut down one of the communication channels used by the Ukrainian military, as well as to have a wider ripple impact on internet services that, for example, managed the remote monitoring of wind farms in Germany. Similar to how it has attacked energy infrastructure, Russia has also targeted communication and IT infrastructure, including data centers and wireless towers. Ukraine's digital infrastructure has allowed the government to continue providing services online despite the conflict. Because Ukraine has spent years with aid from Estonia and others, building up its cyber resilience and now had a lot of wartime support, many Russian cyber attacks have failed. It now has lessons for us to learn. The Ukrainian government has demonstrated how technology can allow taxes to be paid, public services to stay available, and data to be kept safe even during a war via apps like Dyer. Countries are still hesitant to grant Ukraine access to their newest and most sophisticated systems, in part because of concerns that they could fall into the wrong hands, even though contemporary AI-enhanced systems are now undergoing testing. The networked battlefield and the AI conflicts of the future are greatly influenced by this clash. The Russian AI conflict is comparable to a testing ground, where numerous businesses and governments may continuously train and test AI systems for a wide range of skills, functions, and applications, even if AI may not yet be able to determine the nature of the war. This is the tragic paradox. Each day that the conflict continues and human beings are losing their lives in horrible ways, AI systems are being trained with real data from a real battleground. Not to stop the suffering and end the war, but to become more effective in fighting the next one. The AI War. That's it folks, we've come to the end of yet another exciting video. To know more about AI warfare, swipe right to the next video and don't forget to subscribe to Military Knowledge. Thank you for joining, goodbye.